Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, to go back to your opening remarks, uh, you said that you won't sign another short-term CR. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, yesterday, Secretary Liu announced that the government's borrowing authority would run out yeah. around November 5th. Would you recommend negotiating an increase in debt ceiling as part of these budget negotiations on spending caps? And also, does the Speaker's race complicate these negotiations? I'm sure the Speaker's race complicates these negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. Uh, it, it, it will complicate the negotiations, but uh, when it comes to the debt ceiling, we're not going back there. Uh, maybe it's been a while, so let me just refresh everybody's memory. Raising the debt ceiling does not authorize us to spend more. It simply authorizes us to pay the bills that we have already incurred. It is the way for the United States to maintain its good credit rating, the full faith and credit of the United States. Historically, we do not mess with it. If it gets messed with, it would have profound implications for the global economy and could put our financial system in the kind of tailspin that we've saw uh, back in 2007, 2008. It's just a bad thing to do. So we're not going to negotiate on that. It has to get done in the next five weeks. Uh, so even though the uh, continuing resolution to keep the government open lasts for 10 weeks, we have to get uh, the debt ceiling raised in five. Uh, you've got a shorter timetable to get that done. Um, but he, he, here's the bottom line. Uh, uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, John Minner, myself, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, uh, we've all spoken and talked about trying to negotiate a budget agreement. And yes, uh, Speaker Banner's decision to step down complicates it, but I do think that there is still a path for us to come up with a reasonable agreement that raises the spending caps above sequester to make sure that we can properly finance both our defense and non-defense needs that maintains uh, a prudent uh, uh, you know, control of our deficits and uh, that we can do that uh, in short order. It's not that complicated. It's, you know, there's, uh, the math is uh, the math. And what I've encouraged is that we get started on that work immediately and we push through uh, over the next uh, several weeks and, and try to leave out extraneous issues that may prevent us from getting a budget agreement. I know, for example, that uh, there are many Republicans who are exercised about Planned Parenthood. And I deeply disagree with them on that issue. And I think it's mischaracterized uh, what Planned Parenthood does. But I understand that they feel strongly about it, and I respect that. But you can't have an issue like that potentially wreck the entire U.S. economy. Any more than I should hold the entire budget hostage to my desire to do something about gun violence. I feel just strongly about that, and I think I've got better evidence for it. But the notion that I would threaten the Republicans that unless they passed uh, gun safety measures that would stop mass shootings, I'm going to shut down the government and not sign an increase in the debt ceiling would be irresponsible of me. And the American people rightly would reject that. Well, same is true for them. There are some fights that we fight individually. They want to fund Planned Parenthood, there's a way to do it. Pass a law, override my veto. And that's through a whole bunch of issues that they disagree with me on. And I've, that's how democracy works, I've got no problem with that. But you have to govern. And, I, and, and I, I'm hoping that the next speaker understands that the problem Speaker Boehner had, or Mitch McConnell had, in not 
dismantling Obamacare, or not eliminating the Department of Education, or not uh, deporting every immigrant in this country, uh, was not because Speaker Boehner and Mitch McConnell didn't care about conservative principles. It had to do with the fact that they can't do it in our system of government, which requires compromise. Just like I can't do everything I want in passing an immigration bill or passing a gun safety bill. And that doesn't mean that I throw a tantrum and try to wreck the economy and put hardworking Americans who are just now able to dig themselves out of a massive recession, uh, put them in harm's way. Wrong thing to do.